Kolovi. Okay, so on the front coolovers, there's a top nut for the shock. You can take that off and it'll release it from the caster camber plate. And then there's three more bolts on top, or nuts, I mean. And you take them off as well. And the little J part, you can stick up under it without the shock in place. And then put those three nuts back on top. And then you can slide your shock up through the middle put your top nut on that'll hold your shock in place until you get your spindle on your lower control arm and put the two bolts through through the bottom of the shock that'll hold your spindle up and then you can tighten those two bottom bolts you want these really snug or it might move in the uh, in the shock you might hear some popping if it's not tight enough. Now we're working on the other side as well. Do the same thing on this side and then make sure you tighten everything as you go back together. I like to use Loctite on the bottom two nuts and bolts for the spindle to shock. And then uh, we'll transition into the back. All right. Now we're going to start on the back. I don't know who tightened these freaking things last, but good lord if they're tight. That or they haven't been off in 20 years. Too bad, you got some shoes left on it. Drum brakes are freaking terrible anyway. Luckily taking these off here, you don't have to worry about messing anything up. Well, I didn't at least because I went back with uh, uh, five lug Cobra brakes. So I didn't have to worry about this. If you're just swapping five lug axles, you might have to worry about this. I'm not sure if the drums are different sizes or the backing plate. So you have to figure that out for yourself. Anybody want some crappy brakes? Let me give me a call. I got like a bunch of sets of these. Alright, here's where it gets messy.
Sí, no, 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 There we go. Oh, that nasty goodness. Oh, ho, ho. I wish y'all were here to smell what I'm smelling right now. Oh, that is nasty. Smells absolutely terrible. in here at least. We'll get a 8mm night or whatever it is. 8mm socket that let's see how tight this is. It is an 8 millimeter, in case you're wondering. Oh my goodness. Becoming a theme of this car. The bolts are entirely too tight. There we go. Magnet. Couldn't find my magnet, so we're gonna have to do this old fashioned way with a good old pair of needle nose pliers. So you just push one side of that pin out, 
and then pull, rotate it around and pull it out the other side. Make sure you put this in a clean place as you'll go back in and you don't want any contaminants in your rear diff. Now you just push one side of your axle in far enough to where you can grab the C-clip with a pair of needle nose or a magnet works better, but it works either way. Sometimes it's a pain to get in there. That axle has to be just right for it to come out. There it is. And you'll do the same thing to the other side. Once you have that C-clip out, you can just pull the axle out and you put it in a clean place. So these drum brake caliper or drum brake brackets are held on by four 19 millimeter bolts and nuts. This lighter rounds. These four here. You put a wrench on the back side and hammer it off with the, with the impact gun. You will have to keep this hardware. And then after you get those four bolts out, you can just use a uh, pair of bolt cutters and cut off the e-brake cable as you won't be needing it with the rear disc brake. They come with a new set of e-brake cables. Make sure you disconnect your brake line from the rear seal wheel cylinder. Be good to go to take that off. See, I forgot to take off the brake line. Once you do get it off, it comes off pretty easy. Imagine that. Trash with trash pot. I think somebody forgot their wrench. But that is not mine. Nice. Free wrench. Free wrench. Sweet. This is your new rear brake bracket. It comes marked passenger or driver side. And you do have to use the old hardware. I couldn't find the new hardware if it comes with it. You will have to install these before you install your new axles. Just keep that in mind. Do not install your new axles unless putting these behind it. Because you will be taking them right back out and draining all that fluid you just put in. After you get these on though, you can slide your axles in, throw your seat coats back in your rear diff, and you'll be able to seal it back up and fill the fluid. 
this if you're using an RTV gasket, wait the specified time before refilling the fluid or it might leak, it might not. Now you slide your axle back in there. Sometimes there's a little bit of pain to get in the splines, but eventually you'll get there. And it has to be perfect like they come out to get your C-clip back in there right. But once you got it sitting on the axle in place, you can just push your axle right back out and it's in place. Now you do the same exact thing to the other side. We're trying to figure out this whole light situation. Like how to video and keep light where you want it so the viewers can see and all that kind of stuff. I'm getting better at it though. I just hope so. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the video of installing the front coilovers on the white fox and doing the rear differential stuff. Installing your new ex axles and brake brackets. And get rid of that old crappy drum brakes that nobody likes. Here's a little sneak peek of what this car ends up being like on the roads. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I love answering guys' questions.